watching with us on this Tuesday. Groundhog Day. Yeah, Groundhog Day. <laughs> Who knew it was like Rod's uh, favorite? Yeah. He has been favorite on thing. He's very excited Groundhog about Day. it. Day. Yeah. Usually a lot, I've met a lot of weather people who don't like it. But it makes it a weather day. Yes. And as I told you earlier, sometimes the weatherman is actually the weather gal or woman, mm -hmm. weather professional. Yes. Is, is more accurate than the actual groundhog sometimes. Well, I would this hope so 100% of the time. <laughs> groundhog day. Sometimes Give us the real quick, uh, super quick, now that you brought it up. Oh, okay, what did they right. say? So, um... It's too early to tell if we will see a shadow here locally up at the uh, Oregon Zoo. Generally, it's cloudy outside, but there are some breaks. Remember, if you see a shadow, you're frightened, and the little varmint goes back into the hole, and you have winter for six more weeks, which happened last year, and the local, uh, I think it's a hedgehog, was correct, actually. We had a cold March. Okay. But if you don't see a shadow, you stay out, and then, uh, you know, spring is around the corner. Okay. Is this what we're talking about today? Now that we got that, is this the topic? We no, this is not the topic. <laughs> At least one of us. Okay, you clicked on this home. video uh, because you want to talk about <laughs> shopping and work and the work-life balance. So we started this series called What's Next this week, and we've been teaming up a, um, I call him now just our resident futurist. Yeah. He's awesome. His name is Steve Brown. He's an author. He worked at Intel for 31 years as their kind of futurist and talking with different companies about technology and stuff and habits. And um, so yesterday we talked about work-life balance and what it will look like maybe when your office says, hey, why don't you come on back uh, for a couple of days a week? Like, do you have cubicles? And he says, no, it's going to be more collaborative space um, because we really are missing that creativity one-on-one -on -one and kind of bouncing ideas off each other, which just does not work on a Zoom call. Yeah. And um, he talked about how your boss, or if you are a boss, you have to change your management style and really, um, you know, reward people based on results. And instead of, you know, time in the office or overtime or the perception that you're working harder than other people. Um, and he says, you know, he was this other guy, uh, executive with Columbia Sportswear, says he's really done a 180. He used to be a butts and seats type of manager. Butts in right. seats. Butts in seats. <laughs> we had an old news director uh, who said, you know, the news doesn't happen in the newsroom and so if you were sitting at your desk too long when it's you should have been thing. out reporting it was <laughs> right. no bueno as he would also say quite frequently oh weather happens in a weather office my butt's yes. in that seat <laughs> <laughs> so it's we never rained in the guys. weather office <laughs> It's yeah, do you guys want to get back to work? Do you love your work from home situation if you are doing that? Um, and today we talked about retail and shopping habits. So people are much more into like sustainable products, knowing where parts or ingredients are coming from, like way down the line, um, like deforestation and, you know, human. Uh, yeah. D didn't he rights? say, <laughs> the same gentleman he also <laughs> said that he, he believes we have done more to get people online and buying online we've done more than we we've would have otherwise it, yeah. switched to in 10 years mm -hmm. we've done in 10 months and it made me think i don't know, personally i'm worried that the, all this ordering stuff online is just going to continue continue to put more and more small businesses in particular mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of business mm -hmm. and right that worries me i know two dog shops up in clark county this is pre-covid that went out of business because people start getting their dog food for companies like Chewy.com. Right. Yeah. And it puts them out of business. So I'm really cognizant, man. If there's something I can get at a local store, even if it's going to be more, I, I go do it because that does concern. Yes. That, and that's great. You know, and he said, if you are, you know, a, a small business or even a medium sized business locally, like you have to make your store or your website convenient. Yeah. You have to, or else Absolutely. you just, right. that's exactly what will happen. People will just get it at an easier store. So you have to make your website like, you know, two clicks to get to the product and buy it. Yeah. And you can't, you know, make it all pretty and no substance. And you have to offer, you know, like, we'll walk it out to your car curbside or right. any other type of convenience. And you have to make it, if you are thinking of like, starting a new thing or going after your dream now that you've realized you should do it in the pandemic. It needs to be something that we all either need or really want. Frivolous little things, right. you know, you can order on Amazon or wherever, um, and you really have to kind of think of your business plan. 
Rod, you had me thinking there because uh, I started to feel guilty. We get Blaze's dog food every month delivered from Chewy.com. It's cheaper, I think. Uh, I don't even know if it's cheaper. It's because basically about a year ago, the vet said he should be on this special uh. type of food. And so I had to go to the vet to get it. Hmm. At least that's what I led myself to believe. And the vet wasn't exactly conveniently located to my house. So right. Mia found it online and now we get it delivered. But I was thinking, honestly, it is great, right? We all say shop local, buy local. But are you supposed to, you know, to what extent are you supposed to inconvenience yourself, I suppose, is, is, well, is really the term, to, to buy local entirely instead of doing it conveniently online. I guess I'm thinking as far as TV goes, you know, we're not sitting here going, man, I hope people continue to watch us on TV. You had to change with the times. We now do a lot of our programming like this online. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you have to adapt. You have to change. You just can't hope that people do things today the way they did them in 1995. We're 85. I mean, right. I think you have to make your store convenient. Obviously, if it's not in a convenient location, you're going to be losing uh, some customers. But, boy, I, I, I don't like the thought of, of not being able to go into my small stores because they're all close. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, like Tina it. Carlson says the same thing, you know, support local. Um, Sue, good morning to you. I buy online more than ever. Never used to. Um, it's easy to do, right? Jake Mo, same deal. I support local. It really is about choices. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. right now it's about safety because you can't have a right. ton of people in one place, but it's a hard line. But, you know, especially the locals, like, I don't know if you have favorite shops that you go into, you get to know the shop owners, yeah. you know, they knew, know you. So it is kind of like you're abandoning a friend. Mm -hmm. right. right. I mean, I go to, I, uh, I can't think of the name of the store. If you live in my area in Hazeldale, it's off of 78th Street <laughs> by the Safeway. Uh -huh. There's a Safeway shopping mall there. Yeah. And Tristan owns the store. What, what kind what of the store? Uh, it's uh, the dog store. Oh. So uh, we get all That's of our dog stuff. Even stuff that I know I could get cheaper at Target or certainly online. I go buy it there. But I am disappointed if I walk in and Tristan's got the day off because I enjoy just chatting with him. I'm like, where's Tristan at? Where's that guy at? <laughs> so you know, like Brenda said, it's part of the experience I look forward to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it called Rough Life? I don't think so, but that's not a bad name. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Rough. Oh, Bye. this is interesting. Connie Staub Miller says, although I would like to shop more locally, so many shops don't enforce mask wearing. Hmm. Really? Hmm. Interesting. Like, I, I always I see people that. inside 100% wearing masks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm ordering sometimes from Amazon, pick up groceries at Safeway. Hey, you know what I never did, Nina, which hmm. was online grocery shop. Now we're doing that. With this whole COVID variant thing and double masking, I'm like, no, it's just not worth yeah. it. Yeah. So we tried... Um, Instacart, uh -huh. and then Instacart got some bad press for the way it treated its union workers, and I am in a union after I'm like, can't do that now. Uh -huh. um, so Safeway, Safeway, the that click list. Uh -huh. pickup is fantastic. Nice. Our orders have been like basically 100% right every single week. Mwah. Nice. Thank you. That's really great. That's awesome. That's one change that I seriously, seriously. Yeah, I, I've, I know a lot of people. Do we have those comments that um, people kind of chimed in um, on Facebook about because grocery shopping and pickup like that was a lot. So Elizabeth says, uh, this was on Facebook, we posted, how have your shopping habits changed? She says, I've done a weekly meal kit service and mm -hmm. Imperfect Produce, it's a great company. It cuts down on mm -hmm. visiting the grocery store. Uh, Rick says, I'll go grocery shopping early in the morning during the week when there's less people yeah, in the store. Yeah. yeah, very smart. Peggy says, we don't have grocery delivery or curbside in my small town, so I shop between 7 and 8 a.m. and stock up. Everything else yeah. is Amazon right now. Yeah. Sanford Walker, oh, we have another one you're reading? I'm sorry. Uh, Terry, right. not shopping hardly at all. Online shopping is the new norm. Yes, so factor that in if you're thinking about you know, making a new career or a new business, got to make it easy for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stanford Walker, faithful viewer, says, nothing the same since COVID. I think we need to do some major change in the workplace and style. The current work style and management style is very outdated. As long as your work is done by set time, you are, you as a worker should be good. And done. I think yeah. that's definitely going to change, yeah. right? Everybody's and that's what, yeah, people are just loving is like, I mean, if yeah. you've been, you know, you guys, except for me and Brenda have all worked at home for some period of time. And yeah. I mean, hopefully when that clock chimes, you know, at the end of your time, like you can just go upstairs and go out in the hallway and be with your family, you know, like it's pretty great. You're saving on commute time, saving on gas money. Can I say this in case our boss is listening? I would <laughs> accept 
a cut in pay, not a big cut in pay, but a small cut in pay. <laughs> now they're listening. If I could, on a normal day, do the Sunrise Show with you guys in the studio, I love it. But then go home and do the noon show from my studio from my house. I'll take his extra. I would love that. <laughs> well, why? why sure, if they're listening. <laughs> why don't we do that, Ron? Why, why aren't you allowed to do that? I was told it's because you said, you told the boss, Drew, that you wanted to be close to me. That's what I was told. No. Oh. In fact, they have us sitting further apart now than oh. ever before in that newsroom. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you guys, I love this. On YouTube, thanks for all of you guys watching on YouTube. Natalie Walker, welcome. She says, I'm new to your show, and I love it. Oh. Oh, I nice. shop very early in the morning on Saturdays. This is how this works, Natalie. We get to shout you out, chat live with you guys. Where are you, where are you from? Natalie Snow. Walker, are you Natalie uh, related Walker. in any way, shape, or form to a fella named Stanford? Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, been watching the show for years now. I Paul R. Years. on YouTube says, good morning from Grants Pass. Oh, good morning hey. to you. Southern Oregon. Yeah, love it. Brittany Olson says, I work at Fred Meyer. Things have changed so much. Moms don't come into shop after dropping their kids off. No rush at noon for people on lunch. Oh. And I see a lot of people having grocery lists. They're in and out. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, like instead of sense. just kind of yeah, walk, Man, kind if of I just walked the aisles oh. without a list... It would take me forever, and I would forget so many things. I love the grocery store. You do? I've always yeah. liked to grocery shop, too. I always leave with tons of food. I, uh, <laughs> I, had, I was in Costco this month, or pardon me, this past week, and first time since the pandemic hit. So the first time in over first a year. First time? Uh, Mia's gone a couple of times. I have yeah. not been in Costco. Really? And, uh, Rod, I thought of you because, you know, sure as you said last week, I think it was on Sunrise Extra, mm -hmm. they've got those sample carts out there still. With no samples. But you're not sampling it. And right. I was confused. I, I felt confused because I saw the woman. She was talking about the food. No one was around her. Yeah. Uh, she had prepared some meat. It looked like a cheeseburger. And you just have to look at it. And I, and I said, why is no one getting in the line? And then I thought about what you said, Rob, and I thought, there's no way she's really just here making that food and talking about it without anyone eating it. But, yep, no one was eating the food. Yeah, that's what Costco's doing. We were talking that, you know, the Super Bowl is this coming Sunday. And I discovered a couple years back. So the weekend before the Super Bowl in the old days was yep. the best weekend ever to do sampling at Costco, which I can make an entire day of, <laughs> because I had all these extra Super Bowl, you know, snack munchy uh -huh. treats right. out. So it was like... Like, you know, the, 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 the um, sampling was just crazy. And now it's very sad that, of course, we're going to have to wait. What is on your Super Bowl uh, buffet this, this year? What are we doing? See, my wife is she makes this uh, chicken in a slow cooker for, uh, for uh, pulled chicken tacos, uh -huh. basically. Oh. But her, it's one of those recipes that you stumble onto, and it's just money, yeah. right? That you could have it every single day and never get tired of it. Hey, so, uh, doing tacos. Yes, yeah, so we're basically, we'll be doing that during the Taco Super bar, Bowl. nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, Natalie Walker responded. She says she lives in Sheridan. Hmm. Well, thank Very you, cool. Natalie. Yeah, Hill County. Yeah. Stanford yeah. Walker yeah. even says, good morning, Natalie Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila Speck said, I would rather buy from a store than online. Love buying local. Um, Renee Robertson says, I've been buying double deli meats and chicken and pork, et cetera, and freezing half and using half so there are fewer trips to the store mm -hmm. here in yeah. panama we have a guy who drives around the neighborhood and sells fresh fruit and veggies out of his that's truck awesome nice. that's a regular service. panama viewer yeah not to brag but we have <laughs> all over the world i love it i am um, curious where a few of our other viewers live because brenda you mentioned the, uh, the comment from connie earlier who says she's not shopping local right now because she feels like some of these smaller shops don't right. enforce the mask rules and then uh trish chimes in saying so true connie my husband and i are always trying to buy local but only specific places now because of COVID. unfortunately she says many locally owned shops do not follow the guidelines nor do they enforce mask wearing i'm thinking trish and oh. connie where exactly do you live because every store i've gone into big or small near where yeah. i live you know masks are everywhere mm -hmm. yes yeah, on everyone same with me totally i think outside of the metro area okay uh in my experience it is some of the smaller towns. Like that, yes. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm just going to I think it's out. very shocking, you know, when you leave the metro area and you go into another more rural place. And, yeah, it is not uh, COVID, 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 you know. Favorite. Connie says she's mm. talking about Silverton, and Brittany says Cornelius, Oregon here. Mm -hmm. Cornelius? Brady Pemberton says hubby and I shop every two weeks, one in store and one online pickup. Yeah, Ryan wondering how the show works. Oh, live greetings from the UK. Jeez. UK. 
Ryan says, are they reading comments? Yes, we get to see your comments live on here and we shout you out. Um, so, you know, you can feel heard and read your stuff. So I want to know more about like people. Is there is there anyone on the stream watching that has been working from home that normally would be in an office? Yeah. Would you be down to go back maybe two days a week? Is that even harder now to have like creative meetings if some people are at home virtually and some people are, you know, in this big conference room now? How does that kind of work? I just imagine like our news meetings, you know, if we could go back to just in the newsroom being people together and yeah. then I guess someone has a phone that's like live streaming it for the other people who are home mm. virtually. I don't Sounds know. Like I always the thought the news kinda. meetings ran too long. If Did we could you? all just focus. Yeah. Like, I feel like the Zoom meetings sometimes now have turned into those as well. The Zoom meetings are quite quick well, compared sometimes. to well, the in-person ones. Quick-ish. And then you can just, like, leave it and not uh. many people will notice. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I think there's, it's, it's not cut and dry. Like, I don't think anyone would say work from home is absolutely 100% better. Work from the office, same thing. I mean, there's good and bad in both scenarios, but mm -hmm. I have to believe Anyone who doesn't have to drive in to work, I don't care if you had a shorter commute or certainly a longer mm -hmm. commute, if you don't have to do the commuting right now or anymore, mm -hmm. that's a huge plus. I mean, those are hours of your day where you weren't working, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you weren't at home, you were just on the road with other cars waiting to get someplace. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I, I know the people that I live with, my wife, and people that I live around who are now working from home say that is the number one positive. Right. Absolutely. That expert was saying for, for um, fresh graduates out of college or high school um, who are entering the job market, this is not good for them, a working from home no. situation, because you don't get to meet your coworkers. Yeah. You don't get to get the feeling of the room and the feeling of your boss, you know, when they walk in the room, like does everyone kind of straighten yeah. up or what is the vibe and the culture of your company? Right. And that can really carry over. He was talking about kind of currency and we keep drawing from this bank of how we remember you know, like our newsroom, for example, like our, our coworkers who are working from home, like they know how it felt and looked and sure. how it ran and right. who's who and who sits where and um, how you can speak to certain people very casually and others you might need to explain something a bit more. And it's just that getting to know people Absolutely. that like new graduates would have no clue about. And it really makes getting in the job market a lot harder. And they're already digital natives, right? And one of the things that young people, people skills. <laughs> are very, very in tune with are their devices. They're awesome, but yeah. maybe not so much face to face. Yes. So that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, he was very pro, actually. It's important to have, you know, um, I don't know, I'm going to say face-to-face -face contact right. because I can't think of another way to put it. No, that's right. But, uh, yeah, he was very pro that. I found that interesting that um, there is real value in that and that will not completely go away, which, which was great to hear, actually. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't expecting to hear it. And that's how you get, I mean, you know, whatever kind of business you're in, if you're selling things or... Um, you know, whatever. I mean, it is really like a, a magnetism or like, you know, people's personalities and um, strengths maybe in the way that they speak or something that can really sell a product or like get the business moving. And it's yeah. just hard to do that over Zoom or just email or something. Mm. It is pretty incredible when you think about all these different companies and how they've had the ones who have survived to this point, how they've survived uh, because no one a year ago this time, well, if you go back exactly a year, we didn't see this coming to this extent at all. Even last March and April, we kept thinking, all right, so, you know, get through the next few months, get through the next few months. Now it's been almost a year. And uh, they pivot, you know, all these companies made that pivot thinking this is only temporary <laughs> and maybe it is only temporary, but my goodness, temporary has been long. Yeah. I have to read this. I'm, I'm, it's not funny, but I, I'll tell you why I find it funny. All right. So Becky Post, I went to Winco yesterday. I go to Winco all the time and a lady had no mask, just one of those, you know, visors, uh, prote mm -hmm. facial protectors that people wear, which was open on the sides, of course. But then she took off the visor to sniff the celery. Oh, is there a benefit? Sniffing That's what made me funny. Is there a benefit to sniffing, sniffing celery? Sniffing celery. I don't know. Do Stop sniffing, sniffing stuff. Celery in the grocery store. <laughs> of all store. things to sniff, it's celery. The world is going to hell in a handbasket oh, because we're sniffing celery. Oh, I don't know. No, no. That's weird. That oh is my weird. God. Um, Crystal Dryden, good morning <laughs> to you. Absolutely love working from home. She says I would not change it for anything. I've gained hours back in my day. Yeah. And WebEx has been a great way to hold meetings. My team went remote about a year before the pandemic. Mm. 
Oh, so we have time to establish a routine. Yeah, yes. that's really Saving interesting. Saving money on, on rent and leases. Uh, back to YouTube. I love every, everyone heard that we were doing shout outs and so they're uh, talking to us. Flores says, I'm working from home and with a newborn, I would rather stay mm. at home. Yeah. Um, Sh uh, Shell says, I work from home versus an office. It's functional, but not seeing people is the hardest part. I'm curious. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. How does Flora work from home Flora. while taking care of a newborn at home, right? I mean, yeah, those seem hard. like, that's mission impossible. They yeah. sleep a lot. At least at that, first. yeah, they do sleep a lot. Sleep <laughs> During the day. I don't and recall keep our you up all night. Lot. Joshua Whereas, Madrid, oh. good morning to you. Joshua. Um, he says, can't really online shop to maintain my home bar. So I'm out and about supporting many local liquor stores to keep up the inventory. <laughs> What's your favorite liquor Cheers. store? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell, tell me. me. <laughs> uh, Flores on YouTube says it does get lonely, but my job has a virtual break room so we can chat and have some laughs. Oh, do you guys see Trisha's comment? I should read this softly in case her husband's listening. She goes, shh, don't tell my husband the real story. He thinks we save so much money because these days, you know, we're not going out to eat. We don't go out and get our daily coffees. But the truth is we spend so much money between Amazon and other home delivery Ooh. services. Mm -hmm. But Trisha's husband, shh, does not know that. Ah, I like <laughs> We all have our secrets. <laughs> right. You got to get that package off the porch before uh, <laughs> they come looking. Exactly. That's my motto. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ryan is loving the show. He's our viewer from UK. It's his first time. He says, man, this is ace, which means I guess good. I wish our news people did this. Is it me or is it just mad to see news people talking to us? Can we create so a rival? Can we mad? see if we can get two Panama viewers or listeners before we get two UK viewers <laughs> or vice versa? I need to jump a friend on the stream. We're I here every we're, day. We're, he, we're huge in Bolivia, from what I understand. Oh, huge. Yeah. I like huge it. Is it huge? Huge. Huge. Yeah. Yes. Howard Wright says, while some of the non-enforcement things that he's seen were stores not limiting the number of people in the store, they posted it but never really enforced it, especially over the holidays. <laughs> so before we go, let's give a sneak peek. So tomorrow we're talking about uh, our future is going to be talking about hospitality and like all the folks who work in hotels and motels and restaurants and bars and the travel industry if you work for you know the airlines um, and things are not good for the Portland market in that respect a lot of people you know see the news about our protests we are one of the states with the strictest COVID guidelines so you're not going to book a hotel room if there's like not stuff to do right. around there and so we are one of the last markets um, to kind of make a comeback after this. And so we talked with Provenance Hotels, which owns six of them here in Portland. Only three of them are open right now. The other three are temporarily closed during the pandemic. And they talked about having to get desperately creative of like, hey, book a room for a one-on-one -on -one office meeting or, mm. you know, come to use it as a home office away from your house and kids for a while. Mm. And they use um, heat maps and they, track how many people are driving in to the city from you know other places in Oregon or Washington and uh, so there's people coming regionally you know people aren't flying here and they won't but um, what that kind of translates to for jobs so we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow yeah. looking forward to it you yeah. can also wrap up the way we started Groundhog we have Day. Time to go. Hey. Bunch yeah. of Tiny Phil. My turn to see. Uh, but Director Brian there's Matthews said that there's a moment here where the gentleman holding the, the, the groundhog, Pucks of Tiny Phil, gets scratched on the hand. Oh, I thought he got pooped on. Well, there's the, uh, the yeah. see, someone circled the scratch mark. Mm. Bunch of Tiny Phil. No aggressive it's, today. It's hey, cloudy. Grab that poor little Notice thing. Notice it's cloudy. They're saying he's, the groundhog saw his shadow. Don't get Rod started But it's cloudy. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.